I think we are ready for questions. Yes. I believe that the one side of the library is open where it wasn't. I'm sorry. I think it was a statement, not a question. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, we can repeat the question. We, we slipped up. The plan tonight is to repeat the question back clearly and get confirmation from the questioner that that is the proper question. Otherwise, we're going to spend time going all over with the mic. So we'll make sure the question we'll make sure the question is properly asked, and then um, uh, that they confirm that that's their question, and then we'll go ahead and answer. It. Okay. The comment was made that according to the rule book that the library needs to be open during school hours and the doors are not to be locked, that it is supposed to be open. Is that correct, ma'am? Yes. Okay, that was a correct comment. Jan? As we discussed, the door is open during school hours. I lock it each night. Okay. Yes, the door is open. Uh, when, well, repeat back. All right, the, the comment was made by Jan, who is the librarian and media specialist, and she said it is open during school hours. Is that correct, Jan? Okay, uh, Don Fritz uh, told me that the day he was there, it was locked, and he was led to believe it's regularly locked because they want the kids to go out the west door. So the contradiction in the fire inspector's report versus the librarian herself is a conundrum, but Don Fritz uh, stated that on the record that he was led to believe it was regularly locked for that purpose. How it got locked that day when he was there, if it's normally kept open, we don't know. But that's the fire. That's that's Mr. Fritz's report. Tom. Yes, my name is Tom Crummel. Uh, question to Mr. Jordan. You indicated, sir, that Don Fritz stated on the record these items. I wonder, would, do you have a reference to that or copies that you can share with us this evening? Sure. Can you repeat the question, please? And then while you're looking at that, if the, some other questions want to go, or I can ask some other pieces. The, the, question, the question was, uh, do we have documentation to the fact that Mr. Fritz the fire marshal uh, said that the door was locked during his inspection. Is that correct? The correct question? And the answer was yes, we do have the documentation that that, that, that the fire marshal said that the fire marshal said that the door was locked during his inspection. Is that maybe the problem? Maybe while you're working on that, uh, Mr. Dorf, I can ask you a couple questions about the enrollment figures and some of the tax information you went through. Uh, in particular, on the tax sheets, uh, this document. Oh, yes. Uh, that was on the chair that I sat in, and then I grabbed uh, another one that I had on the same chair. <laughs> can we, excuse me, can we use the mic? It'll make this meeting go much more efficient if you use that mic. And We're having audio trouble the way it is. But I think if you just have, have or mic, just walk up to the mic. Get the mic. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess my question, uh, First series relates to the tax increase. You had indicated that Valley County was the number one uh, percentage increase, and is that between 07 and 08? 
Yeah, 07 to 08. And then did you do any references to what might have been behind that increase or what that resulted from? No. Okay. All right. Um, did you drive into town today, sir? Yes. Okay. Didn't fly. Okay. Did you have to notice the ethanol plant on the outskirts of town out here? Sure did. Okay. Um, that came on as a tax roll, and I think that has something to do with that. Right. Okay. I um, just wondered if you had accounted well, for that. Can I answer that? Sure. Go ahead, yeah. please. Taking a massive new amount of valuation. the microphone. So I did you all hear his comment about the ethanol plant? Okay, he's, he's wondering if the ethanol plant had some impact on that dramatic increase in property taxes. Is that a fair? I'm asking if you accounted for that as the reason for the increase. No, um, the reason is, and this goes back to what Larry said a minute ago, just because a large amount of valuation comes into the district doesn't necessarily mean that all the budgets automatically expand they spend more with a 29 million or what was the figure a large amount of valuation coming in and the all the different governments of the county are carefully managing their budgets your levy rates should go down and you should pay less taxes but when they see this new valuation from this ethanol plant coming in and everybody automatically assumes let's expand our spending then uh, your your taxes may not have gone up personally as much for a year or two but the infrastructure of spending has now been expanded government never comes back down with that spending so if they wanted to be fair to the taxpayers they could have reduced the millage rate when they brought that on my next this, maybe Superintendent Kroger, do you have a comment to that point? No. I got a different comment. <laughs> well, should we stay with his line first? Okay. Um, I guess my next one, and this is more of a question. Um, on the yellow chart where it talks about the, uh, on the left-hand side, it gives the uh, budget range starting at $4 million at the bottom, 8 and a half million at the top. On the right hand side it gives the uh, what I understand is the enrollment figure and then across the bottom gives the years I was just curious um, why the total school enrollment for the 2008 2009 year and also the 2009 2010 years were not included in that chart uh, and if in fact if you had those numbers available if you could provide those um, my source for those is the Nebraska Department of Education, and that's where they stop. They don't have any more. They do have fall population or fall membership numbers, but it's not the same type of count as the ADA. So I didn't want to make up anything and insert anything in there. And getting records was, as you many of you know, was a difficult process. So we stuck with what the state provides us. Okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll share with you a little bit then. I believe for the 0809 year, the total school enrollment was slightly over 500. I think it was 503, or maybe give or take one or two. Um, and then for 2009, 2010, I'm trying to think what that number is. And granted, I don't know that those are the uh, um, absolute numbers. So I'm I'm giving you an approximate. But uh, I believe that's. Uh, that 0809 was slightly over 500, and then 910 was again. Uh, okay, the, the fall pop numbers for 0809 continued to drop for the junior senior high school. Yeah, I think, and I think your chart here is talking about total school enrollment. Is that correct? One chart is talking about average daily assessment. The other one talking about. Okay, so the yellow chart. What, what's the number on the right side? That's what I'm trying to understand. <laughs> the key says average daily attendance. And that's K through 12. 12. K through 12. K through 12. Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I, th I think we're on the same page. We're using yes. different terminology, but the yes. same kind of numbers. So, we, so about we, 500 for each of those two. We years. didn't have the numbers available from the Department of Education, but um, the fall membership numbers for the junior senior high school is going down. So in your grade school, if your numbers are valid, then your grade school enrollment increased a lot in 07 08. Well, that, yeah, and that would, would have been the enrollment reports and so forth that were in the attendance totals that were part of the school minutes that I know you've received. So, was I'm just curious why those were included, included 